What is up, everybody? Today, I'm excited to talk to you about a company called Zygeni. And originally, when they sponsored this video, the idea was that I would just use them to show something I've wanted to talk about for a long time, which is upstream malware detection as opposed to CVE scanning. This is something that they're doing that was very unique. But as I use the platform more, I just legitimately thought that their approach to this problem is so different from what other people in this space are doing that I just wanted to highlight their platform more generally. So that's just so that you have some more insight into I did not plan on this turning into a more holistic look at their platform and what they've built. But really, that that's just what it turned into because they're approaching this problem of supply chain security more holistically. And what I mean by holistic is I wrote this article a while ago that breaks these categories into these eight different tools that scan different parts of an application for security issues and then focuses on an outcome of vuln management and scanning. But something that even I, I think I overlooked writing this is that a lot of this are chasing categories rather than outcomes. Like, why are we doing the scanning in the first place? And the outcome that I think Zygeni is really focusing well on is supply chain security. And so just to hop into their dashboard, the, the way they categorize these tools is, is genuinely unique in the sense that it's not just categorizing things based on like, here's every scanner you could want, right? Even the way that they think about issues is like, there's some stuff here, like open source is SCA scanning secret secrets, but just different categories and ways of thinking. And I think that the heart of this, let me zoom in some more uh, and really push their UI to its limits, is this dependency graph. And I know graphs like this always get a big ooh and ah in demos, but I think here it shows just the way that they're thinking about this stuff is with a level of granularity that's a lot more than what most people are doing. So even in this repo that I'm in, let's just talk about what this repository is at a high level. This is a insecure Kubernetes app in which I have some insecure Helm charts that are used to deploy. I have Terraform that's used to stand up an EKS cluster that then these Helm charts are applied to. I have a Java app, I have a JavaScript app, and I have a Python app. But there's also these workflows here. And in this workflow, I when a pull request is open, I scan it with my little AI scanner, and I just did this to test that out. And then I also have this publish that only exists for the Python image, because that's as far as I got with automating this, where I can create new releases. And when I do a release, it will re create a new version of the Python app based on this Docker file. But I haven't done that for Java or JavaScript. So anyone trying to think holistically about the security of this repo is a very complicated thing. Because I have multiple sub-modules in here, I have multiple Terraform deployments, I have multiple applications, one of which is deployed, one of which isn't. I have third-party code in the form of these workflows coming in. There's just a lot happening here. And so that speaks to the complexity that's happening, where within this one repo is part of my Latio Tech organization, which the CICD is within GitHub. And here's where it's, it's even recognizing that this is a CICD job, right? That this last scan is one of the CICD jobs. The other one is to push it to the registry. And this is so hard to make. It's very cool that they do this, where it's pushing. So this job pushes to Docker Hub. This Docker Hub stores this component. And this Docker file generates this container. So this is the container image. And then even more critically, this Kubernetes resource, the Helm chart, is using this container. So it can see that this container is at the heart of a lot of different deployments, and that ultimately it's built from this Docker file, which is built in this repository. And this is important because when you run into real environments with a lot of different deployments, it's easy to lose track of like, where is all of this stuff being built? Where is it coming from? So for example, this requirements.txt file, if there was a vulnerability on one of these components, it's one thing to trace it back to the requirements text file, but it's another thing to see that this Docker file, ex this requirements.txt, which pulls these things in, this helps build an, an actual runtime map of your application where I can see that this dependency that's coming in with artifacts stored on Pipey, for example, is actually getting built here and deployed out. So this this level of granularity is super rare in, in the first place. And it's actually super hard to build that. But if I just hop back to this view to just focus on like, the, there's a lot of stuff about this platform that makes it just a really unique approach to the problem instead of just being this all-in-one ASPM scanner. 
First, let's look at this idea of all of these findings within the SCM itself. So here, this is a detection that I have never seen in a tool. And this is a critical issue, which is definitely the case, where a project should not have generated binary files within the source repository because you don't know why they're there, you don't know how they get pushed. And so here you can see all the problems, right? Binaries are cannot be reviewed, they allow subverted executables. And so you can see actually where I didn't even think of this as a security issue, but that's happening within this Java package. I have this payload.bin file that no one's able to scan, so no one's able to know it's secure, but this is a payload that I use for testing out this deserialization attack. So I may, I'm only able to exploit this because I have this payload.bin file. And this is just one example of like just really thoughtful approaches to CI CD security in general. Something like status checks coming in. So I have no status checks on this repo because even though I run the last scanner as a workflow, I don't require it to pass. So in order to do that, I would actually have to come in here and go into the branch protection and require status checks to pass before merging. And then I could select which status checks to pass. So again, like just more holistic ways of viewing security. This is happening for the Gradle wrapper.jar file, where normally you wouldn't store the wrapper for your Gradle command directly within the repository. This is something like generating an SBOM from it. I'm clearly not doing any attestation. I don't require signed commits. And what all of this is pointing towards is the fact that you shouldn't trust things that are built from this repository in the sense that there's no validation happening. There's no status checks happening. Like at any point, anything that is in this repo could be should be treated like it could crash at any time, which is the very much the reality of the situation because I'm obviously just maintaining this and pushing stuff willy-nilly to it as I'm testing stuff. So then with package managers, we'll return to this, but this is very interesting because it shows which dependency managers I'm using and which artifactories I'm using. So Docker Hub, NPM, PyPy, even for stuff. And, and this general insight will often reveal more to people than they, they think, because it, it typically you think you're only using like your own ECR, but in reality, you're using like a ton of different stuff. Hopping over in the CI CD, these are again some super unique alerts. And I just really want to emphasize this. I don't think I've ever seen this in a tool where it's a dangerous workflow and it's referencing the OpenSSF rules here, but it checks if the pull request target can be used in conjunction with a pull request checkout. And what that means is I could essentially code inject into this template because there's no check happening against it. And essentially, this is just saying that if an attacker were to compromise the supply chain here, they could gain a ton of access directly into the underlying code. So this poison pipeline execution is another really unique alert to happen where this workflow can execute code before the code's reviewed. And so this means that there's no approval required before this workflow runs. So if I was a developer or someone malicious had gotten access to the machine, I could make it do things like print the environment variables as part of this workflow before that code had ever been reviewed by anyone, meaning that it could just be run arbitrarily. So each of these things are very rare detections, again, that require a unique sort of approach to this whole issue. So then if we go back to the deployment, even things like this are super interesting, where it saw anomalous activity, it saw that I pushed a change to the Docker file just directly as a push. And this is super interesting because it's just noticing that this file is not usually changed in this way. And so it's actually raising it as an anomalous activity threat to indicate that, I mean, technically I should never be force pushing, especially changes to a Docker file. I just did it because, you know, this is the kind of stuff that maintainers do. So just a ton of awesome visibilities here. Same with just these general Compliance check marks, right? Like a question that comes up all the time with compliance teams is what are some ways that I can make sure that I have my CI CD set up in a secure compliance way? And here's things like enforcing MFA, making sure that pipelines are scanned for vulnerabilities, making sure that there's scanners and uh, scanning pipeline files, making sure that branches are up to date before merge, like a, a ton of great suggestions for just general hygiene of your pipelines. Are all right here. And I wanted to touch on all this stuff because, again, to this sort of unique approach, 
Zygeny has put a ton of work into upstream malware detection. And this is hard to get your head around at first, but there's a difference between malicious packages and vulnerable packages. So a vulnerability is something like this low dash vulnerability. That is a true positive where in my code here, I have this low dash package. I am using it in a vulnerable way. This version of Lodash has this vulnerability on it. And so it raises a vulnerability that, hey, someone could inject, someone could inject Lodash with a vulnerable template. And the difference is there's these cause a ton of just noise and false positives that are very difficult to deal with. And so Zygeny has focused more on this upstream malware detection where you can actually see here all of the recently detected packages that are getting scanned as malware. So this is something that more and more companies I think are leaning into as like, this is supply chain security. As far as looking for things like the XZ attack that were upstream malicious takeovers of repositories and pushing malware to them, like you can see just how common this stuff is happening. Like there are multiple happening every single day across just their supported languages, which looks like mostly JavaScript here. And so this is just detecting all sorts of different spyware that's getting uploaded proactively. So this, this sort of upstream malware detection is, again, a rare feature, especially to show it in a dashboard where you can see in real time how much malware is getting detected by Zygeny. Another unique feature is the way that Zygeny thinks about inventories, where you have this summary of components. And this is splitting up again sort of the way that that graph view was split up. Every single thing that's being built and deployed in the repository and then attaching a risk score to each thing. And this is generally correct, right? Where the highest risk thing is my code itself. And then it's this Docker image that's getting built. And then it's these actions that are running. And then you're seeing some of these other, like the deployments get escalated. Some of these newer Docker files get escalated. But definitely I've put the most work into making this stuff as insecure as possible, considering this even has a malware ransomware script on it. But you can even notice that these are the files I am changing the most, right? This critical file changes is just such an interesting way to think about this, where because there's things happening, like this template change, something malicious is is pretty likely to be happening. So if I was in an environment that had more controls on it, it would definitely be a true positive that someone was pushing changes to a key configuration file that would allow them to do some kind of exploit that could get pushed downstream to your users, right? If I was building and distributing this container image you wouldn't want just someone to be able to make force pushes to it. Same with the general risk of this repository, as far as having binary files in it, as far as having different security issues turned off. So again, I really just wanted to highlight with Zygeny, a lot of these really detailed detections around the CICD, around the IAC, around the anomalous activity, like they're building a platform that really stands out from the ASPM sort of noise because it is instead how can we holistically make your ci cd pipelines your supply chain your repositories as risk-free as possible i mean even the way that they're approaching open source here where there are scores around repository health and even changes that are happening to some of these versions so this just to highlight this anomalous activity slightly more there was one pen test that i remember distinctly where an attacker was able to pose as one of our lead developers, this isn't in a current role or anything, and open a pull request that essentially just allowed them to inject a backdoor into our code. But they set their Git name, because that's just a Git config anyone can push, to the lead developer's email. And so the pull request got approved because everyone assumed that it was a rush change and everyone trusted the lead developer, and the code got added and he had a backdoor. And so there's a lot of things that would have shown up here where it was a suspicious event where like This user's not usually messing with this repository. They're changing a critical file. And the general SDLC checks would have ensured that signed commits were flagged and turned on as well. And those are the two things that really would have stopped that. It wouldn't have been... That's what's ironic about that sort of pen test is none of these scanners would have detected any issue with that because these are just different scanners to surface problems. Zygeny's building more around how can we stop that use case that happened. Because another kind of attack would have been like injecting the template, right? Like we saw with the last scan where that penetration tester could have injected something into this template that 
would have gone unnoticed or made, if he had an account into the GitHub repo, he could have changed something about the file to make it print the environment variables and then ran this workflow to get those secrets out of the CI CD. And so there's just a lot of different, this would actually stop attacks taking over your supply chain as opposed to what is much more common, which is just scanning more and more of the code. So I really just wanted to highlight, yeah, that I appreciate how different uh, Zygeny's approach to this whole problem is. So I think we're going to see more and more companies, as, as the noise of each individual scanner sort of fades into the background, the need to build around a use case is going to continue to increase. And so I, again, I appreciate Zygeny building around this use case of supply chain security more holistically, doing things like upstream malware detection, like template injection, like anomalous activity from your developers. These are all things that focus on how do we secure the SCM and the pipelines instead of adding more and more scanners into a system.